Hi everyone, coming up on this week's Pet Stop, welcome to our Easter special. It's all about rabbits, how to care for them, and when not to adopt them as pets. We'll also have our Pet of the Week and some great animals in need of homes, so let's get started. Hello and welcome to the Pet Stop. I'm Dr. Brian Voynich from the American Animal Hospital in Randolph. Well, every year in the months following Easter, rabbits who were once Easter gifts fill local rescue shelters in humane societies, or worse, they end up ab abandoned outdoors where they're completely unprepared to survive on their own. My next two guests are all too familiar with that problem. Jamie Noe and Franny Larita are co-directors of Hug -a Bunny Rabbit Rescue in Rutherford. Thanks so much for coming. Thank, Thank you for you. having us. When did you get into this rabbit thing? So we started back in 2006 okay. when we found a rabbit that was going to be fed on a dinner plate. And we've oh. always been in rescuing and we thought, well, maybe we can make this work. So we had our spade at the time for, I think it was almost $600. Whoa. And then realized that we could find them homes and, you know, that it could work. So that's kind of where it started. Mm. How about yourself, Franny? Same thing. We've yeah. always been into animals ever since I was little. When we met each other, we realized that we had both had a bunny. Yeah. And it seemed to be something that we saw a need for. Everyone, re we also do you know, any animal, but any, mm -hmm. everyone knows you can rescue a dog or a cat. Mm -hmm. that we found that there was a need for rabbit rescue. You're not kidding, so yeah. And especially around Easter time, you know, exactly. it, it seems so, Easter. quote unquote, cute to bring a bunny home, but it's a living creature, you know, and, and, and chicks and that sort of thing. They, they get bigger and they, they, they require some work, right? Exactly. So you have to do your homework. What kind of homework do they have to do? Well, I mean, a lot of people think that rabbits are great pets for kids, which in the right situation, they could be a good pet for a kid. Mm -hmm. But for example, a lot of people say, oh, let me just get it as a pet for my child, when rabbits really are prey animals and they're exotics and they need very special care. And a lot of people aren't aware of that. So, you mm -hmm. know, we see a lot of surrenders post-Easter from people that just don't know and haven't done their homework. And then the rabbits grow and they need to be spayed and neutered and people don't realize that. You right, know? right. And for any, so some of the misconceptions, for example, uh, they're, they're, they're maintenance free, they're easy, low maintenance. Uh, tell us they're about not. that. They're um, not. Actually, a lot of people don't realize um, that they don't like to be squeezed. This, these bunnies are very calm and content on our laps because we know how to hold them and we know what to do and what not to do. You don't want to put them up to your face. Mm -hmm. You don't want to put them where other animals can get to them. You don't want to just let them run around your backyard. Those are things that you see in commercials, you see in books, and those are just things that you shouldn't right. do. Pass right. them from one person to another, you know, things like that. Sure. And Jamie, they, they don't uh, live just a year, so they, they're a long time committing, oh, no. aren't they? Rabbits live eight to ten years and possibly more if they have great vet care and great health. Um, but, you know, rabbits are a long-term commitment, yeah, yeah. and people really should think about that. Yeah. And Franny, they're not cheap to, they to maintain, are not cheap. right? No, they're, they are considered exotics, and mm -hmm. before you even walk into an exotic bath, it's, it's more than it would be for a dog or a cat. Plus, you don't want to feed them what you find in the supermarket. There's proper mm. diet for them. There's proper nutrition. They do need their nails trimmed. They do need the proper housing. They do need a big cage. It's not that tiny little starter kit that they right. come with in right. you know a, a pet supply store that they'll be happy in. They need toys. They need you know everything that you would need. They need and Jamie, they're, they're not all, you had mentioned they're not always cuddly, you know, right. they're, they're predators. <laughs> right. So, so rabbits really are always looking for who's going to eat them or kill them. They're, you know, they're prey animals. They're, right. yeah, they're thinking mm -hmm. about, you know, who might be hurting them. So, yeah. you know, loud noises coming towards them quickly, quick movements often startle a rabbit. Right. And even though we see rabbits out in the wild, these are not wild rabbits and they no, don't do as well no. at all, do they? No, these are domestic rabbits and all of our rabbits are indoors only spayed and neutered, litter box trained, and they should not ever, we don't actually ask, we ask our adopters that they're never outdoors, mm. even for playtime, and definitely not set free. Right. So what is your mission at Hug a Bunny? Our mission is to, we do educate, we do like to do outreach and education, Good. but our main goal is to rehabilitate, rehome, and get these little guys out there as members of the family. So we don't want the rabbit in the cage, we want rabbits with free roam time, we want rabbits with X pens and we want them to be part of the family mm -hmm. and we don't want that they are the number three surrendered animal to shelter and killed animals in mm. shelters so we we'd like to change that not that we want anyone killed more or yeah. you know surrendered more but we like to let people know that they're not disposable sure. they are a member of the family just like any other pet sure. should be Jamie tell us about these cuties that you have with you right now okay so this is Levi he's mm -hmm. a, a mini lop and we rescued him recently from a hoarding and neglect situation where he had been severely neglected and we suspect that Levi has some sight issues um, but you know he's 
litter box trained and he's neutered and he's ready for his new home. Very friendly. He's a big licker and he has one blue eye and one half blue eye and he's quite the handsome guy. Yeah. And um, Franny has Sky on her lap and Sky is a tiny little Polish dwarf with bright blue eyes and we've actually had her in the rescue for a year and a half. You know, we really take our time to find the right homes for them, but um, you never know why some rabbits get overlooked and others don't. But again, she's litter box trained, spayed, and she's ready for her home. Great, and and uh, the medical care is really important. We have an expert at uh, the next segment to talk about that. But you brought some pictures too. So these guys come in all shapes and sizes they do. and colors. They sure and, do. Right? Yes, there are so many different breeds of rabbits. Here's some. Right, tell yes, us. Yes, that's Blue Jay. He that one didn't get in a fight either. Did <laughs> no, no, he was adopted <laughs> also. You know, a lot of our rabbits look totally different and people think, oh, you know, I'm just looking for the cottontail. Mm -hmm. But, you know, rabbits that have different colored eyes are very uncommon. And of course, we have the two here and then Blue Jay there. But Blue Jay's in a great home. He's bonded to two females. And um, we had rescued him from a kill shelter as well. Wow. Okay, got a couple more. Oh, that's Wisteria. She's one of our adoptable bunnies right now. Uh, we rescued her from, uh, she was in a basement in Brooklyn. Um, no food, no water. Oh. And she's doing great now. Mm -hmm. and, and we have your your website on there and it'll be uh, yes. uh, linked to ours as well hugabunny.org that's Great. easy enough that's maurice he is in our, a special needs bunny and that's junie she's another rabbit in our rescue mm -hmm. we have all different rabbits um, all of them are spayed and neutered uh, that's sally and susie mom and daughter still looking for their home you know rabbits that Cute. are bonded and that's oh, <laughs> chili and cinnamon those are two cinnamon, of them. yeah yes yeah. we just rescued a litter a, a mother who gave birth the day after we rescued her and that, those are two from that litter wow. Beautiful. So, yes, and Victoria, <laughs> another one of our adoptable rabbits. She's beautiful and very friendly. How can our viewers girl. help? How our viewers can help is if you do, if you do have a bunny, you, we want you to take the proper care of it, which Dr. Dillon will also get into, but mm -hmm. we want you to treat them, not just leave them in a cage and have an unsocialized, unspayed and neutered bunny mm -hmm. that you find has behavior issues or you can't really deal or smells or mm -hmm. isn't really clean. We want you to learn how to take care of your bunny, but also how they can help and rescue Great. is um, go to your shelter, make sure they're giving the bunny greens, see if you can go and possibly socialize them, you know, help clean their cages, spread the word that there are rabbits out there and maybe instead of a chocolate bunny, for, instead of a live bunny for Easter, how about a chocolate bunny there or sponsor a bunny Good for idea. a rabbit rescue? Good idea. And if they do their homework and, and they're knowledgeable and, and know what they can do to, to, to raise a bunny, they can contact you folks. Oh, absolutely. Because you've got them exactly. for adoption. Well, thanks, yes. thanks so much for coming. Thank in. you for having us. You're welcome. Thank folks, you. still to come on our special Easter edition of the Pet Stop, rabbits can make great, great pets and as long as you know how to care for them. We'll give you the 411 on bunny uh, being a bunny owner plus adoption and Pet of the Week as well, so stick around. There's a lot more to come on the Pet Stop, only on News 12 New Jersey. Welcome back to the Pet Stuff. I'm Dr. Brian Voynich. In our last segment, we talked about the problems that occur when people adopt rabbits on a whim at Easter time without educating themselves about their care. Next, we'd like to tell you what it takes to own a rabbit and how to properly care for it. My next two guests know a lot about rabbits. Dr. Michael Doolin, he is the exotic and avian animal veterinarian at North Star Vets in Robbinsville. Also with us is News 12 New Jersey's own Michelle Powers, one of our meteorologists. Michelle is also a longtime rabbit owner. Great to have you both on the show. Thank you. Thank you. You're not talking weather for a change, Michelle. I know, I know. It's a little strange here. But this is my second love, actually. Yeah, well, tell us about your passion for rabbits and how it got started. Yeah, well, I've always loved them. I had them growing up when I was a younger child. Um, and then I got back into them recently. Uh -huh. For the last five years, I've had some rescue rabbits. So yeah. I'm really into the rabbit rescues and adoptions. Now I'm realizing how many rabbits need homes. Well, that's great. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Doolin, you are a renowned exotic uh, specialist in New Jersey, and I really appreciate you taking your time to get here. Oh, my pleasure. Uh, but a lot can go wrong with rabbits, so uh, education is really important. Uh, how do we start? How do we start? Well, we'd like to know that they have a lot of needs. They have a lot of requirements beyond the little two foot by three foot box that they've kind of traditionally been kept in. Mm -hmm. They really need a lot of room. They need to have an area that can be kind of bunny proof so that uh, uh, they don't get in trouble chewing electric cords and that sort of thing. Uh, they need uh, quite a, a variety of dietary items that are uh, 
things that don't just come out of the bag. They need a lot of fresh foods. Mm -hmm. So there's you know, quite a commitment that doesn't really uh, isn't apparent to most people until they have already gotten into it. Right. And Michelle, you have to bunny proof your home, don't you? Yes, <laughs> Tell you us do. what that means. Oh, my goodness. Well, I was going to bring some pictures, but uh -huh. I didn't want to scare the viewers <laughs> out there. But no, really, rabbits are chewers. Their teeth continually grow, so that could be a problem for some of them. Uh, they like to chew wood. So the baseboards in my home are chewed, a couple of window sills. So I try to provide them blocks of wood to chew on. You can see in that video there, there there's a, a block of pine. These are your two, huh? These are two of mine. Mm -hmm. I have three. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to bond these guys. <laughs> <laughs> this is my midnight. He's a black mini Rex, and he's <laughs> a very happy bunny. Quite a jumper. Yeah, this is my Misty. She's a gray mini Rex. They're siblings, actually. Mm -hmm. Oh, and this is my beloved pancake, which I adopted <laughs> from Hug a Bunny Rabbit Rescue. All right. He's a 10 pound cinnamon. And this, unfortunately, this was his bonded mate s'more. Unfortunately, she's not with us right now, but. Um, yeah, I mean, they were big, but I love the big ones. I love the little ones. Mm, okay, so Dr. Doolin, the, the more the exercise, the better? Absolutely. Yeah. Exercise is the greatest Prozac for us kids and rabbits oh, and, yeah. and dogs Absolutely. and cats. Yeah. <laughs> exercise yeah. is important. Lot, we tend to see a lot of bunnies that get overweight because they're sedentary. Mm. They sit and graze and graze and graze and really right. don't have an opportunity to uh, burn those calories. Right, and it's fine to let them run around as long as you have an eye on them, right? So Absolutely. they're chewing the right things and yeah, not the wrong yeah, things. Yeah. And Supervised uh, time is really the essence. Yeah. Now, now handling is really important. You see a lot of fractured spines, don't you, as yeah. a veterinarian, unfortunately, yeah. unfortunately, and not much you can do about these. Show us how to, to, to properly hold a rabbit, because that's, that's, that's one of the reasons why, you know, children aren't really too good with rabbits unless they're really educated, um, because well, you can really, the, you can get hurt easily. Yeah. One of the things about uh, handling a bunny is that they tend to, uh, tend to jump unexpectedly and, and quickly and so uh, people tend to try to restrain them too much yeah you know? and mm -hmm. it seems like sometimes the more they restrain them the more jumpy and the more thrashing around uh, they get so mm -hmm. I like to just try to support their front end with one hand and just come along with my other hand and just kind of support them and I'm basically mm -hmm. just kind of supporting him I'm not really restraining him and I think that's the, that's really the key if okay. I wanted to pick him up and put him from here to over here I would just kind of pick them up like this and set them down right. over here. So what not yeah. to do is to pick them up, for example, by their scruff. Right, yeah. Right. Some people, right. you know, feel like scruffing them and picking them up like that mm. is appropriate. And while mama bunny does that with baby bunnies, when they're little tiny baby right. bunnies, it may be appropriate for mama to do that, but it's really not when they, uh, when they become adults. Yes. Gotcha. And natural is better with diet? Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Their natural diet is is uh, green vegetables and, uh, and and hay. And so they should have free choice uh, hay. We like Timothy hay because it's not as fattening. And uh, green salads. Um, they should have a nice big green salad served uh, twice a day. And Michelle, litter boxes uh, you can use, huh? They oh, can get used yes. to a litter box with no problem. Oh, they definitely do. All mm -hmm. three of mine are litter box trained. And my one pancake, the brown guy that you saw, He's actually free roam in our house like a cat. So we have numerous litter boxes set up throughout the house and he knows where they are. I mean, they're very intelligent mm -hmm. yeah, animals. Yeah. Uh, they're also very social animals. So, it, you know, he does fine in the house with All a litter right. box. Dr. Doolin, in the little time we have left, tell us the importance of spaying and neutering a rabbit. Right, well, especially with the females. Um, uh, statistics, statistics show us that around 80% of females that are not spayed develop uterine cancer by the mm -hmm. time they're about five or six years old. Wow. So that's really a no-brainer in the case of the females. With the boys, okay. there's a lot of behavioral issues that can develop, uh, but we also, with older uh, gentlemen, we see prostate problems and testicular cancer as well. So mm. really, just from the uh, standpoint of presenting cancer and disease, it's uh, it's really important. But also from a personality standpoint, with when right. they don't have their hormones, they don't tend to be as uh, territorial and, mm -hmm. and they tend to bond more easily. Michelle's with, agreeing yeah. with you. Oh, yeah. I, I definitely agree. Yeah. Yes, they, yeah. they simmer down. Yeah. 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 And what's the ideal age to spay and neuter? Uh, around four months. Okay. Okay, very good. Hey, thanks for all your help, Michelle. Thanks for yeah. joining us. Sure. Is it going to be a nice day today? No, it wasn't. <laughs> no weather. No weather. <laughs>